It's time to present Scott DuPont to bring you another episode of Finance Your Movie with tips and strategies to help you get your money to tell your story. It's time! I'm here with entertainment attorney Skylar Moore. And I won't bore you with his bio, but let me just give you uh, three bullet points I found pretty impressive. Uh, Mr. Moore was rated top 100 entertainment lawyers by Hollywood Reporter, top 25 entertainment lawyers by Variety, and top three most influential lawyers in media by the National Law Journal. Welcome, Skylar Moore. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. So I've been following you for quite a while. Skyler, um, your newsletter, which I think drops every two weeks, maybe once a month, and you're really on point with everything. And what really, uh, what I loved was a piece you just dropped called uh, your newsletter, What Film Investors Should Ask Before Investing. And yeah. I'd love if you could uh, get a couple of high points on that. I, I would be glad to. Um, have, having seen way too many <laughs> Film investors make too many mistakes. That's what kind of triggered triggered the article. Um, the, the, the really the the first and foremost is: Are you dealing with schemers and dreamers? Because the industry is just absolutely full of schemers and dreamers, and it's the and it's you you just got to look so carefully. You've got to do the due diligence. What's their? I mean, I literally have just in the last week, and I I kid you not, have had this exact experience where I had, I did a little bit of due diligence and one guy has a criminal record. One guy turns out to be a litigious, he's, he's, he's got a, a serial uh, plaintiff litigator. And the third had already listed um, his, his credits as being, he, he had, he had fan, he had on IMDb and it already listed the film as being, he's a producer on this film where he had never, we never even had a contract with him to produce it. So Wow. You've got you've just got schemers and dreamers, and then you've got lunatics that like if once it's like having AIDS. Once you get touched with these guys, you can't get rid of them. They they just they they drive they'll they'll ruin your film. You just got to be so careful of schemers and dreamers. And do a Google search. You can do a litigation search. You can do a background search. You can just check check them out, man. That's that's step one. So the set. <laughs> Putting, putting the <laughs> lunatics aside, and there are way too many of them. I'm so sorry. It's just this last week in particular has been painful. Um, I mean, I, I sometimes I get thank you know sorry fake bank statements, and I get I get just resumes that are just padded with garbage. Um, the second thing is, who, who does the person you are dealing with if you're going to invest in them do they really have traction in hollywood do the, will agents take their call uh, will will a, will a studio or a streamer actually re retake their call i mean that's step 1 um because so experience. experience experience do they have experience are do what what is their track record because there's just way 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 too many wannabes and running around with a script and saying I mean, because I get I get called like literally twice a day when somebody says, "Oh, you know, Sky, can you raise me to raise the financing? I've got a script." And I go, "Dude, <laughs> no, no, you, you, that's so, not what you do. That's not what I do. Well, that's not a. That's not what I do. And b. No one will do that. No one's going to just show up and give you a bunch of money because you've got a script. So, is the person is the person is is the producer or whoever's got the pro do they have do they have talent attached? And what does it mean to have talent attached? Does it mean that they're fantasizing that that you know they sent a letter to the agent and they haven't heard a no yet, um, or or is somebody actually signed something that they've committed to make the film? So who who are the talent that are on board? Who's the director? What is the track record? What's really really going on? And it's very hard sometimes to get behind the scenes to figure out what's really going on. Um, the, even if the person's serious, so now you've let's assume you've crossed the threshold. They're not a schemer and dreamer. They're a real producer. Agents will take their call. You, they actually do have people attached. Then, the, then the, the reality, the question is when. The, the, usually, they're asking for money pretty early in the process. It's if if they've gotten to the point where they're they're commenced principal photography. Usually, life is easy from then on. Um, you know, they can get a bank loan typically. 
but they're usually going to the investors early, development money, pre-production financing, uh, putting commitments on agents, something like that. And then the question is, is how realistic is it that this film is a go? And 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 are we are is the strategy here just you know spit in a prayer? Um, or is the, or do we really have distribution lockdown? Do we have a a commitment from a streamer distributor, or 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 are you trying to raise enough financing to go you know to to swing for the fences, make the film, and then go sell it? And and if that's the plan, what, is the other financing really locked down? And and so often I I I'm being asked by clients are being asked to put up twenty five percent, fifty percent of the budget, and oh don't worry, the rest is covered. And I always say to I, show show me the money all right i want the money and ask i want to see it i want i'm, I'm tired of hearing because because the, the problem is the producers will often run off and deal with other schemers and dreamers that they don't realize are schemers and dreamers so the question is is the money is you really do to have the balance of the financing because the last thing i want to do is to walk into production i finance half half the half the budget and then find out you don't have the balance there let, let and, me drill down real quick. Is, is it yeah. the safest thing for investors at this point to ask to see the contract that the monies will be held in escrow until all the boxes are checked? Absolutely. Look, a absolutely. In a perfect world, but you know, in in we we don't. The problem is we don't live in a perfect world, and you often have to make that judgment call up front. Will, are the other people either serious or are they ready to go? Um, or I, I, and this is this is I get this all the time. They need the development funding, and they promise that they're going to come up with other money later. And I always tell my client, look, if you want to finance a film, all, all you have to do, if, if you know, I'll, I'll start on the producer side. If I'm looking trying to raise money, all you have to do is find the sucker to put in the first dollar. That's all you need, because then all the next day you go back and you say, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is the film looks great. The bad news is we don't have the balance of financing. Could you put in another dollar? And and I have literally financed 100% of the budget by do, playing the in for a penny, in for a pound game. And so if I'm on the other side representing the investor, I always tell them, you put in that first buck, dude, you're, you're financing this film. You got to be prepared to dig into your pocket because if you're not ready to finance this film and the financing falls through, you're, you're going to lose. Yeah, so yeah, you're, it, you're on the hook at that point. You're on the hook. So that I, I always I tell them you're you're in you put in ten percent of the budget you put in some development costs you're either making this film or you're risking you're losing your money you cannot bet that other people are going to come in so it's it's the old you know time honored in for a penny in for a pound <laughs> method of financing and I financed I, I remember you know I financed some pretty big films my favorite was um, representing Mario Casar and Andy Vanya at, at, at Carolco we did Cliffhanger. And literally every, I'd be on the phone at, you know, two o'clock in the morning, calling all the foreign distributors and saying, great, the, the dailies look great. But the bad news is you got, we don't, we weren't able to get the rest of the financing. Can you put in some, you know, more money? And we, this is we, the, we uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, 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 who is it? Stallone movie. Right? There we go. It was Stallone, Stallone yeah. on cliffhanger. It was, and we literally just, you know, every, the whole thing was just in for a penny, in for a pound fine. But I, and I've seen that multiple times over, over the course of my career, just, so that, I, that's a, that's a big warning that I always tell everybody. Um, and then the other thing is, is what, what are the goodies that they're going to get? Like, you know, are they going to get an executive producer credit? Are they going to get, uh, they, they, you know, more important than the economics often is the goodies. Are we going to go to the set? Are they going to go to the premiere? Do they get the after party? Most important, like, and really making sure they get a credit. Is it main title? Is it, you know, is it going to be separate card? Is it, those things really matter. All right. Yeah. So you got to be very specific about the, specific. the titles, correct? It very, very specific. What's your credit and, and, you know, main versus end title. And, and are you going to be shoved on a, on a, on a, you know, on a, on a card with a 20 people, um, Right. So you've, you've got, you know, those kind of things really, really do, do matter. <laughs> so th those are some of the, those are some of the, I, I could go on and on, but I, I would tell you the one, one thing that I'll tell you the thing that people look out for and not to, here's, here's the one thing no one asks, who's the line producer. I will tell you that is the, probably the most important question because that's the only adult supervision on set that actually makes thing that this thing stays on track and stays on budget. Who's the line? Not the you know nominal producer who does nothing and other than find some you know hopefully you know run around with the script. 
it's who's on the ground actually and and do they have experience because that you know that's night and day um, I'm, so, I'm so glad you brought that up and i want to drill down a little bit i yeah. i think what you say said is 100 percent accurate but i think it's also just as important when they're looking at that top sheet because they're probably not going to see the budget it's like hey here's the adult in the room that actually did the budget so if i'm yes. considering investing this is a real accurate yes. budget yes who 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 really vetted that budget that didn't wear rose colored glasses and and is you know and and really knows what they're doing um and that's at, you know absolutely cuz <laughs> otherwise it's just but just a wild guess you know it's just a wild guess and then yeah. when i i cup on the other side where i tell clients they they often ask the, the two things i tell them don't bother i say don't don't bother reading the screenplay because it, it, you're not going to you you investor not going to have any better judgment um, on the success or not of this screenplay, because no, you know, is nobody knows anything in Hollywood is the correct famous quote, right? And and then the other the other thing is un unless they have a very particular like I have clients that are um, very much into making um, feel good particular feel good films, and so that it's the ethics behind it is very important. So then fine, then go read the script. Um, but if it's monetary, don't worry about it. The other the other thing that I tell them they always start off with you know it's is there a completion bond and i have to tell them like a completion bond is 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 absolutely worthless because if if they want to finish the film they're going to have the actors stand up and in a, and read the script with a camcorder and they're going to destroy the film to make sure that it's completed because all they care about is that it's completed whoever has equity risk in the film a, a bond is worthless to whoever has equity risk in the film, whether it's a distributor, whether it's an investor, and be, because they just ruin the film. And that's why studios, by the way, never have completion bonds because they know this. They know that it's 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 a fake, you know, fake well, protection. It's, it's, especially like a lot of my clients, they're doing under $2 million projects. Let's say they're doing a, a million dollar indie film. Not worth it. Why, why put up all that money anyway? It's just a waste Not of worth money. it. Totally, totally agree. This is a waste of you know, it's you better to try to stay on budget and establish a track record that people will believe. Right? That that's really your greatest protection. Has the person made a film before that came in on? Particularly the director, by the way, really very important for the director. I mean, for example, you just cannot you cannot have a a budget with Scorsese, Scorsese having lived through that multiple times. You just can't do it. And there, yeah, that, and that's like uh, that's crazy. Can't do it can't do it and so you just you, you've got to have is the director going to be realistic and and have you know enough <laughs> confidence and 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 a control to, to stay on budget and on track or are they just going to go off the rails you know and, and would you got to yeah. look out for that you just got to look out for that yeah who who is your um in, in case anyone from our millionaire flicks audience is listening who is your typical client on the investor side are these people saying hey sky i'm thinking about investing in the movie can you help vet this for me or can you help review some documents um i have investors that are all over the board some uh a lot some are in some are some are uh, big players that are in in for the, the the really are just pure monetary they'll do bridge loans they'll do loans they'll do they'll, they'll make hard economic decisions that are investment they're they're in um investment funds then i have the the people that have lots of money and and are, are and and want to have either an fun all right they want to do something that's fun to them this the is a hobby the they they've they're they've already they've effectively made too much money doing something else and now they just want to have fun and do something that's always a passion project so i get a, i get a lot of those um and just and then and then company companies that that have a particular niche like they the i i mentioned this ethical one i have a client that is very much into doing ethical films um and and whatever they look for something that is that is socially you know progressive basically and so they'll they'll fund films that may not otherwise seem to make economic sense but they're willing to take the risk what yeah. would um what what would be kind of um a final bit of advice for a first time film investor um he's like hey make sure you do this all right i first <laughs> i say first thing is read my book 
I've got a I've got a book called The Biz, and it's very popular. It's in its sixth edition, and it's you know sold fifty thousand copies. And um, that that the absolute first thing I say is you got to read my book, The Biz, and the and in particular chapter two because it starts off most films lose money. And it just goes through the, re, the the law of supply and demand that there's too much production, and that and that distribute. What I make the argument is distribution is king, not content. Con, and I say that because there's just way too much content and not enough distribution, and therefore the 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 power dynamics is no question is favors. Yeah, exactly, favors distribution. So I say you're, you you got to be prepared if you're funding production, and and then then you, and you, you, then your question is. Do you have a locked-in sale? Are we? Do we have a pre-sale? Do we have something? You know, are we selling to a streamer? Do we have some, some light at the end of the tunnel, or are we shooting for the fences? And if we're shooting for the fences, you be prepared to lose half your money because you're you're taking a serious risk. If you enjoy this, great. You want to have fun, great. But you're you you're the odds are you're going to lose at least half your money. And and you're going to Las Vegas and you're having a party, great. But and I I just warn them. I say you've got to you're. You know, if that's what we're doing, if we're swinging for the fences, we are probably going to lose some money here because the average film loses money. And that's yeah. And, and and my my view on that, why not just share that right out of the gate? Because if you get them to the investor agreement yeah, or the yeah. business plan, you're going to have that risk disclosure anyway. Well, yeah. Yeah. Just I tell just them. tell them I just have this is and, and then but, you know, let's if you're in for the fun and the money and, the you know, the the, the we're going to you know, money is like gravy. Let's hope. But but. If you're a big boy and you can afford it, great, you know. And so they, they oh, eyes wide open. You just got to do that. I, and I make them read. I have my book is very, very clear on it. You know, just so that's step yeah. one. So everyone yeah. should definitely check out all all people listening who are thinking about investing for that section of the audience. What film investors should ask before investing? And Sky, how um how would they get on your newsletter or how would they reach out or, or contact you? Uh, easy. I several ways. The, the my, you can just pop me an email that just says the word add, and I will know to add you to my newsletter. And my email is s more m o o r e at ggfirm dot com, and gg is just the letters gg. So it's again s more spelled the normal way m o o r e at ggfirm dot com. Just put the uh, subject line add. I'll add you to the newsletter, and then you can. I I have a a. Forbes column that if you so if you're if you're subscribed to Forbes, uh, I have a Forbes column that comes out every month on the inter various entertainment topics. I have a YouTube channel though if you under Sky More S K Y More, and then if you put the name of the book The Biz, you'll you'll pick up uh, my channel, and then I have and then you can have um, my book my, again my book on Amazon is The Biz B I Z and it's. Again, I I recommend that really to everybody because um, it just goes through everything: copyright, trademark, right of publicity, um, tax issues, the bit securities, everything in the world. It's a course that I used to teach at UCLA. I taught at the UCLA Law School, the UCLA Business School, the USC Law School, and I put together my course and I put it on YouTube, and then I wrote the book, which is the textbook for my course. Awesome. Um, Skylar Moore, thank you so much. I know how valuable your time is. I really appreciate your coming on the show. My pleasure.